मुखम करोति वाचालम पंघुम लंघते ग्रिम यत्कृपा तमहम वंदे परमानंद माधवम offering my most loving pranams at our beloved Swami's feet, who is ever present, always there, especially when a group of wonderful brothers and sisters who have all gathered together in His name, He is certainly here. So offering my pranams at His lotus feet and saying good morning Sai Ram to all of you brothers and sisters what a wonderful day we had yesterday. And Swami has given us this opportunity to continue that, to elongate that sense of love and belonging that we all have with each other. Even though we don't know each other, we feel like one family only because we have made Him the head of our families. And that has brought us all together. Thank you, Brother Balu. He's always a loving younger brother to me. And uh, in the humor, he adds a lot of love in welcoming me. I thank him. I think indeed it is our honor that we have him, who is so devoted to Swami from KG to PG, he says. He has studied in Swami's schools, imbibed it at a young age, and in turn leads his life and brings that love with the support uh, of his wife also. You know, Swami always says, without the support of your spouse, it is very difficult to do any good action. They may or may not be devotees, that is not important, but they have to be supportive. So that he is fortunate enough to have in Deepa, and I'm sure all of you would also agree that in your own homes you have that. I have one in my own home. I would not be able to travel all over the world wherever people uh, invite me, if my husband was not supportive. Once, he never complained when I told Swami, that Swami, everywhere they are calling me, Malaysia, Indonesia, I can't go in two days like this. I came on a Friday, I leave on a Monday. I cannot go. I have been speaking for more than 10 years. Shall I stop speaking now? By that time, my children had grown up. They were entered college. He said, why? The children have gone away to college now. Why can't you go? He asked. I said, I have to leave Mohan Ram. Swami, he has to manage for several days with the cooking and everything. You know, Swami said, why? You are South Indians. If he has curd rice and a pickle, that is more than enough. What is there to worry so much about food? Food is for sustaining the body, that is all. We must eat healthy food, that is all. He can eat. So my poor husband was so upset with me. He said, why did you say that to Swami? Now he thinks I am expecting you to cook for seven days and go. I never asked you anything. And you unnecessarily brought my name into that. I was happily managing myself. Now I have to eat peregrine. I have to eat curd rice now. <laughs> I was nicely making, you know, pav bhaji and this and that in your absence. So anyway, this is the Sarvantaryami Sai. Yesterday I made a mention of this, that I grew up with this ever-present. That is why even in my beginning of my talk, I always say he is ever-present. We say that in our bhajans. Swami is here, he has many names. We sing, yesterday we saw what beautiful bhajans by the youngsters, Brother Amai. So beautifully we do his namasmaran. But as Brother Balu says, we leave it here with him and go away. But don't carry the feeling that he is with us at all times. And I know immediately there may be many of you there who was like me. Whenever Swami said something, I will ask the opposite question. No, Swami, you are telling you are there. How do I know you are there? I asked him that question once in a How do I know you are there? You are saying I am watching you, watching you. It was a big mistake actually. You may all think 
that Geeta auntie has had such a wonderful life, such a life of proximity. Not that I would not negate even one moment of that beautiful moments that I have had with Swami. I would not exchange for the greatest wealth in this world what I have experienced in his physical presence. But at the same time, when I was young like these young girls and children sitting here, the fact that he was ever present in my life, knowing every thought, word and action of my life was a problem for me. Everything I did, my parents never scolded me because they didn't know what I was doing. Come Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we used to be in Brindavan. He will pull you up. Where were you last Thursday? Unnecessary talking with that girl. What were you? Once, you will not believe it. I led a life that was so... It was not harsh, but it was with the awareness that there is a higher energy watching me. If we can bring up our children to remember that at all times, not in a harsh way, but this energy that is watching you will also be helping you also. I used to tell my children when they wanted, I never stopped, even a single Sunday, we did not miss our Sai Center, the Bhajan or the SSE program, not even one single Sunday till they left my house. And of course, my sons were crazy about sports, crazy about football. Come September, football season, they used to drag themselves, come to the center row. And you know, they are old, now married with two, two children. I have four grandchildren. But at that time, we didn't have all these cell phones where they can watch in the car. We did not have only the car radio was there. So we used to put it on and we would go. And uh, she will remember Uncle Ramesh, Ramesh Nayak uncle used to be there in the center. He was as crazy about sports as my sons. Though he was so much older. So as soon as he sees Arun and Varun, he says, boys, let us get out of this place as soon as the bhajan is over. Because we want to get home to see the last part of the games. But somehow or the other, he would come to know and he would tell them the result. He would say, oh gosh, uncle, don't tell us, uncle. So this was my children. They used to beg me only for the Super Bowl, please, can we miss the Sai Center? That one Sunday out of 52 weeks, can we miss? I was a very strict mother. I said, out of 52 weeks, one Sunday, if Swami says, I am sick and tired of you, I will not look after you for 24 hours. Swami also can take the same path as us. No, He says, I am a reflection of your thoughts. I also won't look after you for 24 hours or 48 hours or however many hours that we feel we don't need him in our life when we are pursuing other pursuits. Then what would our life be? Brother Amai said very beautifully yesterday, he is there in our life, but what would it have been without him? We have to ask ourselves. If Swami also takes a holiday from us. So I had told him, so if you are prepared for Swami to take a holiday from you, you take a holiday from the center. This is just a mother and son irritating argument, discussion, every super bull. So one Super Bowl, I said, Swami will take a holiday from you. After that, don't complain. Oh, I was doing this. Swami never helped me and all those things. That is the Sunday he took a break from you. You won't believe it. The following year, that is, you know, this is in September, Super Bowl, whenever. Following year in June, we go to Puttaparthi. We go inside the interview room. Swami says, you don't have a bowl to eat, delicious. So this young fellows, they didn't understand what bowl, Swami said. Are they super bowl? <laughs> Amma is not lit. She's not allowing you to eat that delicious super bowl. <laughs> and you know, when I see the videos that you all play when the bhajan, every expression is imprinted on my heart. I know when that expression comes, what Swami is saying to somebody there, even if I don't hear the words. He said, correctly she said, why I should waste my time on you? So we never skipped a single day. Because as Brother Balu said, that was the environment that I grew up in. See, yesterday we did a parenting workshop. Both uh, Sister Hita and Aruna did a fabulous job. 
and we were talking about this and the biggest hypocrisy on the part of an adult is to tell a child to do something that they are not doing if you are telling your child i don't want you to be looking at your cell phone all the time but i am doing that while i am eating how can i say children are very smart immediately they'll say you are doing it why are you telling me even if they don't tell you out of some respect for you they will not take you seriously i was telling brother balu this morning and i think i mentioned this in the parenting workshop when we came to this country my children were young four and a half five years six years old they had to sit in a car seat i told them to sit in the back seat they have to sit in the car seat every day they would protest because in india they were not that restriction was not there children could sit in the front seat and no car seat also so i was insisting when i was driving so one day i got tired of this constantly saying you have to sit in the car seat so out of sheer just to make you see this is what we do we make use of swami's name even though we don't mean it sometimes to make use i said hey you sit in the back seat this front seat when daddy is not here this front seat is for swami to drive along with me so that i go correctly is a my navigator he is going to no gps that navigator you sit in the back i really quite in my sons they really believed that that mummy means swami will sit here in the car we have to so they were young five and their children are so innocent they believe whatever we tell them they believed so it went on swami when i came gave me the biggest punishment of my life when i left india he told us both to come to america we were both in india my husband and i we were married our children uh, were growing up there very much in swami's proximity suddenly out of the blue swami told us to leave india and come to america it was the biggest blow of my life for many years i used to tell my husband somewhere in your heart you had that desire because i know i didn't have that is why swami has said so this is how we start a fight for no reason in the house as though i know inside his heart what is there in my own heart i don't know how will i know about other people's heart i used to fight less but you know the biggest punishment swami gave naalige endu raavattu don't come for four years me from my birth i have gone with my parents also i can live i cannot live without this sai how can i be in america without seeing him and those were not the days of face time and so many videos and i begged at his lotus feet no swami i cannot go i don't want to i even offered negotiation with swami i said let him go swami once in 3 months i will visit him ha huh? deenike na pelli chesindi time anta waste ches you wasted my time i got you married in brindavan for that is it 3 months away going and coming go swami i will the children will lose your proximity who says wherever you go i will come behind you go so no answer four years why is for me four years you will take that much time to adjust four years don't come if you come here you will cry in front of me and i feel feel bad even my brain you will confuse and make me tell you stay <laughs> you will confuse my brain he told go so finally i came four years later i was waiting and then he said i'll tell you when you come in four years whether to continue to stay in america or not you know what i did my husband also agreed we didn't we stayed in an apartment we didn't buy a single piece of furniture we rented or bought some four or five of these foldable chairs only whatever dishes i required to cook you know why i my husband say how can you even the children i used to make them sleep on sleeping bags on the floor why are you doing like this everybody who used to come to my house used to ask i say no i don't want to give him the opportunity to say anta baag anta konna ve inke me he will say you bought everything nicely you have settled down nicely nice house nice car nice bed nice everything now simply for sake of asking you are asking me shall i come back i don't want to give him that opportunity i know him very well i <laughs> he will use that i am not going to give him any opportunity so all of us four years later we arrived in puttaparthi he came 
as he walks, as Ame was saying yesterday, that gliding walk, how we miss. No video can capture that walk. No video can capture that smile. He came smiling at me. I was sitting in the line. Did you bring your husband? He asked me. I could not talk. My throat was choked. I was just crying. After four years, I'm hearing his voice. I didn't answer. So he turned to Uncle Chakravarti there. Chudu, Bharthani tisku na chana vante Ganga, Jamuna, Yamuna, Saraswati. All the rivers she has brought with her. But she is not answering me, he said. But he blessed me, gave me vibhuti and he walked away. I could not answer. He went up to those lions, you know, where we had that buddhi line you are all familiar with. He went up to there. He was about to cross over to go to the men's section. He turned around and he came back with all the love he had given vibhuti. He joked with me, tried to make me smile because, but mother has to be loving and mother has to be strict also. One slap I got on my face in a virtual way. You know what he said? What you don't have faith in, what you don't believe in, don't tell the children. My heart just stopped. What am I telling the children that I don't believe? I don't even understand what he's saying. I don't know, Swami, what you are saying. Artham Kaleda, I said, I didn't understand. Yenduku, he said, why you can't understand? What you don't believe in, don't tell the children. Raised voice. Whew, everybody is looking at me. By that time, you can imagine the crowd there, no? They are all hearing. What has this lady done, you know? I still didn't understand, Swami. Nah, he said. Swami ku see to and chappi. Nee Subba Lakshmi, Carnatic music cassette anta pitkunnava. You told the seat is for Swami in the car, but on that seat, you have cut Carnatic music, Subba Lakshmi, Lalugudi, Jai Raman, everybody's cassettes. Akkad ekkad kuchan edhneen, where shall I sit? Where shall I sit? What a sigh. Aren't we all happy today to say, that what a sigh we have found in our lives. Whatever age, it doesn't matter. Whatever time. Kshamichula Swami, forgive me Swami. Children have to forgive you. Because you are telling them something, but you are not practicing. You are telling seat is for them. Even loose sentence, we cannot say for fun also with children. Things we are ourselves not practicing. That is the most important part of parenting I learned that day. Don't just joke anything. Another joke also once, but thankfully not happened to me. I used to tell Swami, even if you have to scold me, scold me in private, Swami. <laughs> not in front of everybody. Afterwards, I have to explain to everyone why he scolded, you know. <laughs> So in the interview room, once I was there, he had called other people in the interview room. See, we have to be very alert. This also yesterday I was saying, Swami gave a beautiful explanation of his name once to my children. We were sitting in the room. This is a different interview. Yemrana Peru, what is my name? He asked my sons. Sai Baba, they said. Oh, spelling, Telusa. Do you know the spelling? Yes, yes, yeah, A-B-A-B. What does it mean? Oh, divine mother and father, they told. Now, these are all things we teach in the SSE. No, 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 he said. So we don't know, Swami, what does it mean? Then Satya, truth, they said. No, that is the, not that. Then Swami gave a beautiful example. B-A-B-A, -A, start there, last name, like America. B-A-B-A, <laughs> be -A -A. aware, be alert. B-A-B-A, -B -A, Baba. But Sai Swami, these fellows are young. Sai Swami, you left out Sai. No. If you are aware and alert, then Sai. See Sai. Always. That is the A. In all. That is your theme. See Sai. Always in all. How can you do that? Be aware. Be alert. Be aware, be alert. First he said physically. You take care of yourself. Be aware. What are you eating? Where are you going? Who is your company? Your surroundings. 
That is be aware, be alert. Next level, after you have taken care of the next, you see, does anybody need help? Now I know everybody is enjoying the retreat. When the retreat is over, only the committee members will be cleaning up. Be aware, be alert. They have created such a beautiful atmosphere. Look around you. Does anybody need help? Does somebody need help? Be aware, be alert at a community level. Does somebody need help? Is there something I can do for others? Final, be aware, be alert. Watch your thoughts, watch your words, watch your actions all times. That means you will see Sai in all. Because if you are aware and alert, what is within you is within them. So like this, he scolded me and we were in that interview room with this group of people. So I have grown up in this since childhood. So I'm always watching Swami. Whether I'm watching my thoughts, words, don't ask me all those personal questions. But I'm watching Swami in that. You cannot but. He's such a form of effulgence. Your eyes will not move anywhere. So I was watching. I was watching this, this other group, one gentleman. He had an album with him. And he gave it to Swami. Swami, I have bought a house, Swami. I bought pictures. So Swami is such a loving parent. So, so chala santosha, very happy. He said, opened the album, looked at the picture, even showed us also. Beautiful house, gorgeous house with lands and garden and fountain, all sorts of beautiful mansion actually. He looked at couple photos and then he gave it back. So you should be happy. No, but the gentleman was not happy. He turned the page, Swami, I made you a puja room, Swami. I made you a room, Swami. <laughs> this Bhagwan for whom the universe is his room, not even house. For us, can we make him a room? No. But I made you a room, Swami. See how we say, Ah, chala, bhot achcha hai. This man must learn, no? Be aware, be alert. Swami has seen, he has given the book back. Now mind your business and sit down. Because so many people are in the room. Swami cannot spend two hours looking at your gorgeous home in that half an hour interview. So, and we are also saying, okay, move on. No, he saw your house. We want him to talk to us also. Who cares about your house somewhere? See, these are all thoughts we are getting. Be aware, be alert. While that poor man is... Finally, this man says, no, no, Swami, you have to look at puja room. I got the marble statues from India, from Rajasthan. Got marble statues. Beautiful room, Swami. For you, Swami, I have made, Swami. This house is all yours, Swami. Like this he is talking. And you know what Swami said? Both happy. Will me lick do. <laughs> right in the will. See, because do we mean that when we say, this house is your Swami, this car is your, we want it, we have got it. Might as well accept it. Swami, I wanted a nice house because I want to have satsang or I like the garden, whatever may be your reason or I just like big houses. Whatever may, but be truthful to yourself, no, because he is resident inside you. You are getting what you want, but you are putting it on poor him who lives in an 8 by 10 room. What is this? In Prashanti Nilayam, all the buildings are for us. Swami's room is a tiny little room over there. For that Sai, first of all, can we give him a room? He is anoraniyam, mahato mahiyam. He is in the smallest of atoms. He is in the biggest of space. Can we give him a room? We cannot give him a room. We can only give him our heart. Because the heart can expand, Swami said. It can expand to my size. Heart can expand to my size. If you make yourself small, I'm also small somewhere, buried there. So, he said, will me lick the Don't say things you don't mean. So that was the second lesson I learned. No, whatever we say, we must mean that. If we are not willing to, then we must keep silence only. Just better, silence is good. So like this I grew up aware. So going back to that first point, you may all think how beautiful. It certainly was. I enjoyed especially till the age of 5 and 6, 7, 8, 9. I was hardly that many devotees in my time. So Swami also used to take me wherever he went, when, especially when he was in Bangalore. So a lot of love I enjoyed. 
but at the same time it made me become more and more and more aware of the fact that he knows every thought word and action because he resides within us that is the reason why he knows but one beautiful incident because we are getting so serious i want to narrate this particular incident was very very personal to me and i never used to share it anywhere especially also because it happened when i was very young you see however much time we spend with him sometimes we doubt ourselves did it really happen to me or not should i say this or not you don't know when you are talking so i kept it to myself and it happened when i was quite small my family members knew they were present so what happened i i remember see i don't remember where i kept my car keys every morning i am searching but whatever has happened with swami the scene his expression who was there in the room what smile he had what frown he had everything i remember from i was two and a half years or three years old i remember not because my memory is great because his impact is like thunder in your heart his impact so once from prashanti nilayam we were coming to bangalore and swami was traveling with us in those days swami didn't have all this big car only one small morris minor car he had so my father had a slightly bigger car and it was called standard super 10 i remember it was a black car for front there are two seats with a gear box in the middle in the back also only like two seats one small seat in the middle like we have in the vans here it was called standard super 10 i remember the number also myb 9897 i was 3 years old and we were coming many times swami used to come so the way the seating arrangement when swami comes usually because we want swami to sit comfortably in the back seat so my mother will put some silk and all that and one cushion for swami small car it was swami will sit in the back seat and my brother who was 7 years older than me would sit in that small middle space and swami would bring one other person with him in those days either murli much later sometimes raja reddy garu somebody in that back seat my mother and because i was small in the front seat i would sit on her lap and my father so this was the arrangement we will start that puttaparthi journey we have to talk sometime when we have time that puttaparthi journey now you know brother has come from prashanti nilayam sister babita has come those journeys are nothing compared to our puttaparthi to bangalore bangalore it was so difficult last 26 kilometers was nothing but rocks if your car has to go on the rocks going up and down on the rocks and sometimes the tank uh, uh, crank tank or whatever will break because that so it was a very difficult journey in that journey swami used to come with us he was some so that particular day nobody was accompanying swami only swami was coming alone he had to make some purchases in bangalore for navaratri was coming so he said there won't be place so i will come so he told uh, my brother uh, you sit in the left side seat geetamma kamlamma eight hours to keep geetamma on your lap it is very difficult it, it used to take us more than four and a half five hours from prashanti nilayam to penukonda just 22 kilometers it used to take more than 4 to 5 hours it's too long for you i will he used to do that many times i will keep geeta mai so he made me sit on his lap this was like the worst experience boys and girls not because that uh, i didn't want to sit on swami's lap but the problem was my father people have seen my father you know that rear view mirror is there my father is driving he won't look at the road he will go on looking in the rear view mirror at me because i am sitting on swami's lap i had short hair and if i fidget my hair will touch swami's face so he will go on glaring at me don't fit you can imagine nowadays parents don't want to take children to balavikas and bring them to bhajan it is too much for the children they'll say one hour bali because one hour bhajan too much for the children i believe i had to sit for four and a half hours like a rock on swami's lap without moving my head or anything and i was two and a half three years old do you know any three year old who can sit like that i'll move like this look in the window but my father and he won't say in front of swami thing no our parents we loved and respected them so much because they led such lives themselves they just had to look at us that's all they didn't have to tell anything just one look was enough and i would sit like this like one frozen icicle on swami's lap 
And poor thing, you know, my mother would feel bad, but what can she say? In front of Swami, you can't fight with your husband. At home, you can fight to you. <laughs> but right in front of Swami. So we say, then Swami will say, Padmana, road choose kuni drive chai. Drive looking at the road. Amma, a pillan urke undu, urke kucha. Let that child sit quietly. You. So this discussion between Swami. Every time my father will look, Padmana, road choose kuni drive chai. Look at the road. There is no traffic in that road, only rocks. But road just there is no road also. It's a bullock cart. Bullock cart. Road just in those days, Swami was predicting one day road will come. Road just So this would happen. So one day we left Prashanti. Usually, Swami after morning bhajan, 11 o'clock, he used to leave because it used to take till night to get to Bangalore. That day he left after lunch. Usually when Swami leaves with us at 10.30, they will pack the lunch and we will sit under one banyan tree on the way from uh, Prashanti Niliyam to Penakonda. Like that, Swami will sit on the banyan, under the banyan tree and eat with us actually. They used to bring dharis and put. But that day he had lunch, but early lunch, he left. And by the time we have gone, Prashanti is Penakonda and all those places, by that time, it is evening bhajan time in Puttaparthi. Five o'clock they used to do. And you know, those people, if you Swami leaves Puttaparthi and goes, they used to be so sad. Because there is no life other than just bhajan and Swami in those days. Swami. So he said, I am sitting on his lap. And Swami said, no, Bhaga Kucho Bangar, you sit nicely. You lean against me and sit. Don't look at your father's face. <laughs> Don't look. So I'm sitting like that. You won't believe this, you know. Suddenly, in the, my father was not a singer. My mother was not a singer. My brother, nobody. Suddenly in the car, Om, oh, I'm hearing. So this is not all modern car with cassette tape recorder, nothing. I'm still very small, three years old, you know. So I'm looking here and there, who is telling Om in the car? Swami, come and kuchu, come and kuchu, be quiet, he said. <laughs> Sitting, Om, Om. Then suddenly, Ganesha Sharan, Nam Sharan, Raja Reddy's voice I'm hearing. Where is Raja Reddy? I turn and look at Swami. Bhajan Vinu, he said, listen to the... My brother has happily fallen asleep in the next seat. He was eight years old. Listen to the bhajan. My head is against Swami's chest. And for 35 minutes, full of all the bhajans that is happening in Prashanti Niliyam, I can hear it vibrating in Swami's chest. Can you believe like Yesterday you all sang. We are all singing this Shruti, that Shruti we are worrying. You are really singing with devotion. In Swami's heart, your bhajans will be vibrating in his heart. The singing. Just vibrate. Till the end, and my grandfather was the priest there. In the end, he will say, Bhagavan, Shri, Satya, Sai, Baba, Gari, Ku. In Telugu, they used to say, Jai. Till such a time, complete bhajan, I have heard Om Jai Jagadish Hare, everything. I was so shocked. My mother, after 20 minutes, she said, something is wrong, you know, there is no sound coming from the back seat. No fidgeting, nothing. Even my father looking in the... Simply, I'm sitting there leaning against Swami. That also is glaring. Because nicely, I'm sitting like Swami is a sofa. But I didn't understand. I was there. Then after the bhajan is over, Swami was in a, like a trance. Then he said, Swami, Yem, Swami, I will make her sit in my lap, Swami. How long she is sitting like this in your lap? So, Yem, Lede, Bhajan, Vintun, Dante. Nothing. She is just listening to the Bhajan, that is all. She is not doing anything. He had told. And my mother said, what Bhajan? They have not heard it. What Bhajan, Swami? Adi, Swami, as the most common, that was the beauty of divinity. What was a great miracle for us? For him, it is commonplace. For him, it is his nature. Adi, Puttaparthi lo Bhajan chastu nargada vintu undante. That Puttaparthi Bhajan, she is listening, that is all. Finally, when we came, my mother, I am three years old, I don't want to talk about, our bhajan is over. I want something to eat. Hey, what did you hear? What did you hear? My mother said, I don't know, I heard bhajan. Mama, I asked Swami. <laughs> they want to know, but I am not bothering to tell. Finally, I came home and then few relatives, my 
My mother told Swami, said Gita Harad Bhajan. I don't know how. Then Swami in the small group, he said, Lidu, Papun Chala Bhakti to, they are singing with lot of bhakti. So they can hear in my heart. How can they then, my brother, how can they hear, Swami? Yenduku, nen akada unna, nikada unna. I am there also, I am here also. They are in me, I am in them. That's all. Everything is common. Everything is same. We are all one. So like that I grew up. But it was not easy, right? Because you are always aware that Swami is hearing every word you are saying, every action that you are doing, every bhajan you are singing. Once he told somebody, why you are singing to the mic? Sing to me. <laughs> because all the time adjusting the mic. This is not okay, that is not okay, sound is not okay, harmonium is not okay, this is not okay. You are not singing to me. In fact, once when I was first, came after my first visit to um, uh, Bangalore, uh, Parthi, after four years, then I wanted, I was telling Brother Ame also yesterday, I wanted to finish my basement in our house. We, Swami told me to buy one particular house I had bought. It's not a very big house. Basement was unfinished. It was a new house. I wanted to finish. My husband said, we'll ask Swami, why do we need? My husband is, uh, um, you know, Swami would always be very happy with him. No problem. Always happy with my husband because he never asks for anything, doesn't want anything. I said I want to visit. He said, why we want basement? There is enough space for four of us. Anyway, this basement was a big uh, a matter of discussion. So once in the interview room, how much time you are going to fight with your husband all the time, fighting, fighting, fighting. You know, Swami, I am not fighting, Swami. Why you never tell him anything? Always telling me something or the other. So you are the one fighting for basement, I am telling you. Did he ask? Well, no, Swami, what does he say? He says he properties are not properties. Correct? Huh? He said, yes, sir. yes, Swami, but I want basement for bhajan. I want to do nice bhajan in the house. We don't have big hall to do. Why? Thursday bhajans, home bhajans you are not doing with your family? Home bhajan? I am doing, Swami, home bhajan with my small family. Sunday bhajan you are not going, center bhajan you are not going. Yes, Swami, I am going center bhajan. Sir. How many times you want to eat my head? Thursday you are doing, Sunday you are doing. You want to do more bhajan. You are not practicing anything. What is the point of going on doing bhajan? If you are not practicing, how many times you want to eat my bread? Yes, Swami, I just want to have study circle and this and that in that term. He scolded me nicely about this, finished about properties, properties, everything. I got one big lecture. I said, okay, Swami. I was not happy at all at his advice. What is this? You know, one small basement. There I am seeing an album with fountain in the house. <laughs> he is looking at that. I want one small basement, he is telling now. So I too much favoritism. You know? So I was uh, then so sweet, you know. He is the best psychologist. He said, you know, you want all those things, but shall I tell you my real thing? He said, yes, Swami, tell me why you don't want. Papam, America, lo, in America, you are taking the vacuum cleaner to second floor, vacuuming, vacuuming your ground floor. Then you have to carry vacuum to basement. And I feel so bad to see you lifting that vacuum cleaner that is taller than you. <laughs> I feel so bad. Till today we have lived for 38 in that years in that house. We have not done anything with that. <laughs> My husband was very happy. Now even more so he tells me, see two sons have gone out. They have their own life. One more place you would have had to clean in the house. One more place you add. So every moment when he is with us, life is beautiful. But life is on track. And if we can somehow do that with our children as good parents. But you have to do it at a young age. If you see they are very young, they can't sit in the bhajan. They are very young, they can't go to Balavikas. They are very young, they can't stay in the cabin in the retreat. It is too If you tell like that, then the children will lose the value, the jewel of knowledge of love of Swami. Because they are more worried about the body. I didn't get enough sleep, I didn't get enough. So, let us teach our children.
how to be like that so, so, so nothing will happen go nothing will happen we are eating more for three people for three once he told me for three people you are eating in one day in one meal even if you skip three meals nothing will happen to you <laughs> so like this so i want to tell you one very interesting thing that happened to me so this is again going in this path of omnipresence of swami if we teach not to fear him but to love him because he also does such loving things for us we we tell he is always watching you you be careful if we tell like that the children will get scared they don't want such a person but you tell them in a loving way see he is always there he is watching even my sons when they went to college he told them you guys are going to college what are you going to do in the college Swami says, what are the studies? Swami says, ah, Chudu, Sai ku yeppudu, yes, yes, yes. He said, for Swami, everything is yes, yes, yes. What is that yes? He used the letter S. First, you are student, number one. So, you are a student, what should you do? Study. That is second S. Third, all the time, who can study? So, sing. Pichy pichy patal kaado, manchi patal. What gives you? food for the soul good songs sing then all the times if you are studying and singing people will think you are pitchy so play sports sports make your body healthy healthy body healthy mind healthy heart healthy brain yes sir. if you people do that sai ku eppudu yes 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 if you do that i will also say yes 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 when you ask me for something so so my sons also said very nicely yes 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 i came off then they were in the dorm and they used to come and meet said you go to the college near the university of maryland only 20 minutes away because sundays i want you to continue to go to the sai center so he said so they used to sing and all that when we went to parthi he said hey emra you are playing that basketball Two months ago, not even single ball you put in the basket. <laughs> Swami told my son, and he looked. Swami told the date, the time after which class my son had gone. How many times he missed the day? Baga practice chhi, practice. Go and practice for everything you require practice. Whether it is thinking of God or whether it is sports or whether it's for everything you need practice. Baga practice chhi. in not even single basket uh, you are putting there so like this you know when we tell them such things that swami is their children will learn so when i was uh, in college you can imagine you know all the time whatever i do somehow my sir, cousins he was not pulling them up so much i was the target for swami you know i used to feel it when i was everything he will catch me once i was coming from college i saw an old friend of mine i drank sugar cane juice you know in india on the road side they have sugar cane juice i love sugar cane juice i stopped and i drank sugar cane juice it was on a wednesday or thursday something we st stood there on the sidewalk drinking sugar cane juice half an hour catching up you know where did you go which college and you know? all i came home but i missed that bus at 4 o'clock which comes you know so that after that it was very crowded the la bus that i got to go home from college it was at 5:30 i went home almost at 6:30 my mother was very worried why i didn't come at my normal time no cell phone right to find out where and sunday i go to prashant uh, brindavan everybody we are all busy we only were doing all this i my job was to clean his dining room see cleaning that sudden said he what a discipline he do he said to me you are no discipline so what did i do now swami he said what is that on the footpath dirty water that fellow is using to wash the cups and that fellow is making sugar cane juice standing on the footpath and chatting for one hour you see i so argument not one hour swami only half an hour i talk to her ha uh, half an hour you talk to her but bus miss ayinda leda did you not miss the bus then did you not wait for one hour for the bus then amma papam so scared and worried in the house man if you want to talk to your friend why don't you bring her to your house and talk to her they ask her you know i am this is my address you come sit in the house nicely you drink your sugar cane yakdo veedilo ninchukoni in the road you are standing and drinking sugar cane dirty water dirty sugar cane talking buses are going 
So like this. So all the time he... So this scared way, you know, in college, whatever I do, even if I'm not listening to the lecture, so, oh, you better write down. Sunday comes, he'll say, you never made any notes. So for Swami's sake, only everything. Because we don't want to lose that beautiful smile when you do it correctly. I was like this, that one day my bad luck, I was in second year of my BSc, one day um, um, that teacher, we had a practical class in the morning, two and a half hours chemistry or something. Uh, that uh, teacher had taken the day off, the professor. So our uh, practical class was cancelled. Our afternoon theory classes was there in the afternoon, 2.33 in the afternoon. So I had one group of friends, it's a girls' college, I studied early childhood development in a uh, college called in, in Institute of uh, uh, Home Science in Bangalore. So <laughs> these girls were all there, they all know Saturday, Sunday I spend in Brindavan, I sweep, I clean, I listen to Bhagwan's discourses, so they all knew, they were close friends. The, and I was not going to any movie. Where was the time to go to movie? Weekdays, college, Saturday, Sunday, Brindavan. No time for movies and all that. No TV also in those days. So they said, hey, today class has been cancelled, 8.30 itself, they have announced. You know, my college in Bangalore was right in the parallel road of 25 theatres, movie theatres, in the very busy district of Majestic area in Bangalore. There are in Bangalore. And my college is right there, Maharani's College, Institute of Home Science. So they had said, hey, just 10 minutes walk uh, to the movies. Let us go to morning show, movie. And um, afternoon we'll come back for the class. I am not coming for him because morning show and all that. I will get it on Sunday. I know that. Saturday, Sunday. I am not, not. I was not used to going also actually. I was not so tempted. Then they said, no, no, there is this movie called Amar Prem in those days. And I don't know, there was this famous actor called Rajesh Khanna and uh, somebody was there in that movie. Uh, I don't know who that was. So, uh, Sharmila Tagore. So, they said, come, no, you like Rajesh Khanna. Oh, I don't like Rajesh Khanna. If I say I like Rajesh Khanna, I will get it from Swami there. What is that some fellow you like called Rajesh Khanna? I don't like any Rajesh Khanna. I have seen some one movie or something. That's all. They said, no, no, come here. Why you are such a goody two-shoes? See, this is the peer pressure. When I talk to young adults, say, auntie, you grew up in India. You had no peer pressure. We have so much peer pressure. Believe me, we also had peer pressure. First of all, nobody was devotee of Satya Sai Baba in those days. They all used to say, hey, who is that man you go every Sunday to see? That itself was one peer pressure. Because they thought he was some strange character. Every weekend we are going. Then we are not doing anything other than conducting Balvika's class because at 14 I became Balvika's guru. What, is it? what a boring life you are leading. Just what a uh, life you are leading, I say, you can't. Now, there was one thing. I like music a lot. This uh, movie songs, they had become very famous. In India, you cannot escape. Even they do Ganesh Chaturthi, they keep a big Ganesha, but they will play film songs for Ganesha. So that he doesn't have a boring life, you know. <laughs> so for Ganesha also, so you can hear. Somehow I heard the songs in this movie and I liked the songs very much. Sometimes I used to hum, say, hey, you like the songs very much, even you like, you know. Come one day, very close friends actually, nice girls. One day you come, you know, it's just three rupees, four rupees in those days, we'll go. Somehow, you know, one bad moment, so many people telling me, they said, you're not theoretically missing the class. Because class is in the afternoon. See, this is how we convince ourselves also. Theoretically, you're not missing anything. You're not bunking the class. No teacher only. And only walkable distance, four people. So I went to that movie. And saw that movie, but half the movie I could not see because inside, you know, that inner conscience is telling, you know, I have come, I have not taken my mother's permission. I did not have enough money for that balcony seat, so my friend has paid for my ticket. Now I have to give the money back, so I have to tell my parents why I want more money. So many problems in that life. 
So I have gone there half of everything. Anyway, the songs and all we enjoyed. We came back, I attended class also. There was one song, you know, all of you singers might know in that movie, some Chingari Koi, something, something, some song. I don't remember Chingari business. Chingari means spark, I think. I am a Kannada speaking. I didn't even know Hindi properly. I don't know why I was so this thing about that song. Anyway, that Chingari business, some song was there. I came. Now, this was the time when Swami was making all the curriculum for Balavikas, you know, all the books and all. He had made me the scribe. He used to call me Ganeshi. Hey, Ganeshi Po, he used to say. So I had to write down all stalwarts in the room. Dr. Vinay K. Gokak, C. N. Mangala, Shanta Divakar, G. P. Rajaratnam, Dara Bendra, all these people coming up with ideas what to put into the SSE curriculum. Please, when you do your SSE classes, remember how much work Swami has put in before you so that there is a curriculum so that your children can grow up to become loving children he has put in the work from the beginning so all that sitting there I remember even Swami used to sit on the floor sometimes to look at all the papers spread out by Dr. Gokok and CN Mangala all these people include this loka remove that story don't once I remember they had some story Rama told Krishna see not real Rama Ramayana story some Sunila Sunita came to the class I believe she was fighting some story story they had, you know. Swami said, pichi pichi katal what is this story? Tell the real story of Rama and Krishna. Why you are telling some Sunita came to the class, some Vanita fought with her and all, all these nonsense stories. You should give them examples of noble people of this world. People who have walked the walk, who have lived the life, such people you should give. Not some John came, Ben went and all those stories. Anyway, so this so much work. I was writing. My job was just quietly sit next to the chair. Whatever Swami says, like minutes I used to write down. After it was over, next day again meeting with Uncle Gokok and everybody to tell them what all I had written down. So we don't miss it. So it was a very tedious. Job. And I was in college. So every day for six months after college, I used to go to Brindavan directly 3.30. After Swami gave darshan, 5.30 in the evening, he would have these meetings. That meeting will get over at 7.38. It's dark. I have to come home alone in those days. Buses from Vrindavan to Bangalore. Swami used to send me with uh, CN Mangala auntie in her car and say, you drop her near um, corporation in Bangalore. And from there, Bangaru, you take bus. Swami made all that. I used to reach home at 9. I used to leave the house at 7 to go to college, finish all this and come. Nobody was worried. My parents, they knew Swami will take care. So this is going on, writing down. So I uh, was there the following day for this writing. This movie I have gone the previous day. Anyway, you know, I have convinced myself. After all, there were no classes. Teacher was not there. And more than anything, the name of the movie itself is Amar Prem. How nice. Swami says, Prematma Swarupalara. So this is Amar Prem, eternal love. Nobody can question. No, I am trying to find out what is the divine love. Through this movie, all this I have convinced myself. Eternal love. When to put up uh, Brindavan? I think two days. Signed. They are all writing down. Kasturi Garu was very funny. He used to be. We are all sitting there. My mother also had come that day. We are all sitting there. And Swami is talking, we must, the five values we must include. The main value being love. If one practices love, others. Then suddenly he will say, I'm writing down everything. He says, oh, ask Gita. She knows all about eternal love. <laughs> My pen stops, huh? I'm waiting. Gita. <laughs> She will tell very nicely, he is telling. My mother and all these elderly people, all Gokok Garu, he is the Vice Chancellor of Bangalore University, CN Mangala, principal of the thing, Shanta Devakar, principal of another huge college, all these people are sitting, Dara Bendre, great poet, GP Rajaratnam professor. Gita will tell about love. So my mother is looking, immediately you know something is wrong. Then uh, my mother does not know. I, I operated on the principle, what you don't know, you are better off. 
I have not told my mother I went to that movie. I have to figure out a way to return the money to my friend somehow, somewhere. But I have not told. Only 24 hours. I have not had time for planning. Swami got me there. And he says, my mother doesn't. Then uh, Swami says, you aim Swami. My mother said, what is this one? Ah, chala bhaav til se nenne poindi amar prema. Yesterday only she has found out amar prema. Wow, my, by this time my mother... She went yesterday to the movies. So movies yesterday. She thinks she knows a lot about Amar Prem. So poor thing, you know, I'm sitting there like that. The Kasturi Garo seat. Kasturi Garo, I can never find her. Swami, nobody would have known if you had not simply brought that up now, Swami. Why are you bringing this girl into trouble? Unless he didn't say that. Nobody would have known, Swami. You are telling something. Nobody would have known. Naku I am there inside her heart. I know. I know. She went. You know, yesterday, she skipped college and she went to me. <laughs> he is not giving the full details. Huh? I didn't have class. She skipped college. Papam. Madhulemo vaddu vaddu leyan chappin demo. Beginning she said, no, 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 I won't go. She told. But all the friends told her, no class, no teacher, nothing, you come. She told. So she, the vice chancellor of Bangalore University is sitting next to me. And in front of that vice chancellor, he is saying, there is no class. She said, so go, go, study. No, Swami, yesterday colleges were functioning. <laughs> You are college is there, but she went because she said she has no class. You can imagine my plight. If anything at all, my mother could have punished me in that moment. I don't know what she... Because more than me, she is so embarrassed. Here I am sitting writing the curriculum for Balivika's children. And I have completely behaved in a way that cannot, I cannot be a part of that. Then you know what next thing Swami says, Adi 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 padu, adi adi chingari gingari part. I am not a sing. Chingari part, adi adi chingari chajan adi adi. She went to see some chingari song. You know, Kadanta Radha Swami, I don't know. By that time, I am beginning to cry. He is embarrassing me like, that he paata. Pichi pichi pata. What is that song? There is a forest fire, I believe. If the rain, I don't know the meaning of that Hindi song. Is the forest fire, I believe. But if the rain comes, the forest fire is put off. But if the water itself catches fire, who can put it off? This is the song Swami is telling everyone. <laughs> Swami is saying. And then, that uh, this thing is there every um, uh, year, the rutus, the um, seasons, they will come. Summer, winter, eh? and in the spring, the flowers will bloom. But if spring itself doesn't come, how will the flowers bloom? What is this? Such a thing, can it happen? When the rutus don't come, when the earth is not turning, when the water is catching fire, or the pichi pata. While if somebody makes the song, you people spending the money are going and listening. What is this song? Pichi pichi pata lanta vine. Rama ledu, Krishna ledu, no Rama, no Krishna, nothing in this song. Some water catching fire and this catching. He part vine dana ka. He said, if you sing a song, it should come from the heart that will illuminate everybody. Did you not see that yesterday? Illuminate everyone. Such songs you must listen. Such songs you must learn. Such songs you must sing. But you know the beauty of Swami? He said, see, do you know what chingari means? Chingari means spark. If that spark, it ignites a forest fire. The forest will burn. But after it burns, do you know that all the ashes and everything that falls on the earth, that becomes fertile earth to grow new plants, new trees will grow from those ashes. So what is the type of spark you must ignite in your heart? The spark of love.
If you ignite the spark of love, it burns away all the troubles in your life. And when the troubles are burnt away, the shower of bhakti will come when you ignite that spark of love. The showers of bhakti will come into your heart. And that bhakti will make new plants, new devotion, new devotees become your friends. That is the type of spark you must ignite. Spark of love in your heart and in the children's heart. Which will turn into bhakti, shower. And when that bhakti shower comes, Bhagwan's grace will come. And along with the grace and sunlight, new trees, new flowers, new good thoughts will sprout out of that heart. That type of chingari you must light as a guru, in, as a parent in your child. That is the chingari. Oh my God, what is this Swami? One mistake. But what a beautiful discourse out of my mistake. In fact, when we came out, I still remember um, Kasturi Garu telling me jokingly, Inna solpa cinema hopta iro. <laughs> Keep going to more movies. <laughs> Kasturi Garu. I know, what is this uncle? He scored me. No, no, you keep making, we, we old people make mistakes, he will throw us out of the car, compound. You make mistakes, because of you, we will get pearls of wisdom from him. Pearls of discourses. You keep going to more movies. <laughs> he wanted to lighten my whole feeling that day. But that is the chingari has not only parents, I, by the way, I want other people in this audience may be thinking, I'm an older person, my children have grown, they have gone out of the house, I don't have children, I have children, whatever. But we are all responsible for the children that we see around us. We, they may not be our children, but this is a community of love, upbringing we want to give the children. Even if it is not your child, somebody else's child, you have to be or I have to be an example to them, to the children. That is how we teach our children, not just parents, not just teachers. All of us are responsible if we want to make the society better. That is what Swami is saying. We all, together, it's a collective effort, just like this <laughs> retreat. So, this is the journey now Swami has given. Light this chingari and love and all that. But, you know, how to get that love within our heart, you know? How to feel that, how to ignite that love. It is somewhere buried deep inside, lot of ashes. Swami once, you know, he told me, Swami, people when I talk, they tell me they don't feel. He said, na datapu. He said, is it my fault? It is all rusted nails. You have to clean the rust. Then only the magnet will attract. You don't want to clean the rust, but you say magnet is work, not working. Is it my fault? Not my fault. You start doing the work. Start changing yourself. Start transforming yourself. Make up your mind. Even out of ten things that we have talked, at least one thing. Make up your mind to do it. Like that is it. So, again in this... Um, being this Balavika's Guru Prasmas, one more thing happened. But this is a beautiful thing which I think I should share because we are talking about journeys. Yesterday we are all talking, we are all on this spiritual journey. We are all at different speed, different station, different place, different airports, but we are all on this journey. Swami says, even the small caterpillar will one day reach me. So we are all on that journey, once we are born on this. So one of these uh, meetings, of this uh, writing of mine, it went on for almost six months. You know, my misfortune, whatever has been recorded in my brain, it has stayed. When I came to the US, I had packed all these notes in one of the suitcases and the whole suitcase was lost. I lost all my notes of so many years that I had made of Swami's. But then I told Swami, Antha notes up in this Swami, I told him that when he talked to me and he said, Notes are, ye notes, which notes? Swami, so many years I have returned, I lost everything Swami in the suitcase. Then he said, notes are, pustakam lo kadu bangaru, mastakam lo petko. Not in the pustakam, keep it in your mastakam. Mastakam means head, akkadu petko chalu. 
what is the use of heaven so whatever i am telling you today is only coming whatever grace he has shown me in my mastakam which has been recorded so i was there again writing this curriculum every day or every other day whenever swami told on one particular meeting my mother joined us she was usually not a part of this curriculum making most of the people who were there were educationalists my mother was a very ordinary housewife swami made her karnataka state balavika coordinator for 25 years he changed all the office bearers he never changed her for 25 years my mother served at the end of the 25 years in puttaparthi he said see in our organization we are not honoring anybody who has done so much work but i will honor you he said and he put a shawl and gave her a ring with three diamonds on it my mother she said swami ee ringulu pangalanta naaku oddu so i don't want all these rings mi anugraham unte chalavi ayyanna your anugraha is enough your grace he said no no you have served me with trikarna shuddhi three diamonds are standing for the trikarna shuddhi i am giving you you take he told so that was my mother anyway she came for that particular meeting she asked swami's permission can i come the reason for that was she was holding a balavikas guru training program in a place called davingere in karnataka davingere was a small district at those days district headquarters and in from that place the education minister mrs nagamma keshav murthy she was an ardent devotee of swami and she was the education minister at that time so she wanted to start this balavikas program in all of the government schools so because she was the minister she wanted she took swami so that is how actually the education in human values program started to tell you the history because of that lady she said swami only balavikas children devotees children are getting it let all other children get so as a minister she wanted to introduce the program into the school system private school she doesn't have control but government school she wanted the government school teachers mandatorily to get training in education in human values that's how under um, kalyani sundaram swami had one lady kalyani sundaram under her the education ehv program was built in bangalore first anyway so but for before the education in human values my mother wanted to conduct a balavikas gurus training camp so nagama aunty said i will invite all the educationalists in davangere let them all come and attend the training program along with your balavikas gurus and let them get an idea of what it is so she was going to invite all the principals of colleges high school headmasters and headmistresses teachers from the government level and of course our balavikas guru so this was going to be the training program in those days the training programs were quite common because it was new the teachers had to be trained so before every training program my mother would go and take swami's permission swami in tumkur we are doing in mysore we are doing swami will ask who is speaking truth who is speaking on uh, non violence who is speaking on dharma he would ask he would bless all the speakers and you said and in that i was also one of the speakers i used to speak either on storytelling or uh, uh, ahimsa you know i used to give so my mother came that day to this curriculum meeting because for this particular davingere program she wanted a very powerful keynote address from somebody who really knows swami's teaching who can express because outsiders are coming not just side devotees so we want to put a good impression so she came with the hope because in that meeting dr gokok is there cn mangala is there all these people are there she cannot ask them can you just come because davangere was a small place there is no big hotels and all to house these very important officials devotees are all middle class devotees houses are small so if she requests them to come there is no nice place to put them but if swami tells them to go they will stay anywhere <laughs> this was with a ulterior motive so she came to the meeting i'll see but she can't suddenly ask swami swami tell goka garu or kasturi garu or something she came to the meeting swami said come in she said and then after talking for this swami said yem kamlamma what is what is the next program you are doing she told swami you know that nagama had come last week she has organized such a thing next month we are chala santosham swami said who is speaking on truth same thing she said sunandamma is speaking kusuma kumari is speaking on this and like that she told 
my mother was not worried about those talks because those ladies were used to giving those talks in other training programs. Same person spoke. She told. But she said, Swami, I need uh, one good speaker for uh, doing the keynote address, Swami, because ministers are coming. And education minister is coming. All her uh, people under her are coming. So I want somebody who is very good to give Swami's program a good, proper introduction. I want to uh, tell. So uh, Swami asked, what is the theme of your training? See, for everything we have theme. No? My mother also had one theme. The theme was, which not she had not chosen, Nagama auntie had chosen, Paramananda ke prasthana. Paramananda, you all know, bliss or ananda. Prasthana means journey. So journey towards bliss. This was the meaning if we train our children, that should be the journey they take. So that is the subject, Swami. So I want some. And she is hoping, CN Mangala is there, Kasturi is there. Somebody will, Swami will say, go cock, you go, Kasturi, you go. She said, Ah, Chala Bhagavande, Swami said, name is very nice. Paramananda ke prasthana. Nodhya Gokak, what a nice name, see Gokak. Journey towards Ananda. That to not ordinary Ananda. Paramananda, bliss. All that he said. And my mother is waiting, oh, she'll tell Gokak. Gokak means a very, such a famous man, such a great man. Beautifully, he could speak both in English. And this program is in Kannada, by the way. Because all the local teachers are coming. And Gokak and Kasturi Garu, see, yeah, are very good in Kannada. So, Swami, you want some good person, you must only tell Swami. I'm writing, Swami, to tell name of speaker. Ah, no, matlaad po, he said. I am writing that also. He is asking somebody to... I have not lifted my head. I am sitting next to there. Because if you look here and there, he says, where are you looking? Right. So I am writing. So I am writing. Mama, then, who is this? He is not telling the name. I am thinking, Gokok or Mangala. Nuve, Matlad Po. He says, you. Go. I am 17 years, 18 years old. Just in second PUC. I looked at this, really something has happened to Swami only. <laughs> Who is Swami? You! Go! You can imagine, my mother is like, no, 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 <laughs> this, this girl to speak in some, some audience of 500 people and all great people are coming. No, no, vaddu, vaddu, Swami, Gita, Kaza, Swami, somebody in this room, <laughs> she wants, you tell. Swami said, Yenduko? He said, why? You don't want her to speak? No, Swami, this is a very big audience. Matladapo. No, Swami, I cannot speak, Swami. This Swami is such a good psychologist, no? He says, what do you say, Mangala? Should she not speak? See, they are all elders. They are all professors. I am this 18-year-old, small, built girl sitting there making notes, you know? And in that notes also, every day they are finding lot of faults actually. In the meeting, these people, they are all my teachers. So, you didn't write this, you didn't write that. Look at your spelling once, see, and Magala auntie told me. Your spelling is so bad, correct your spelling. So, <laughs> Swami, how? If, but they don't want to say no to Swami, no? If Swami say, you think you want her to speak, Swami? She asked. <laughs> yes, why not? What do you say, go cock? Gokok was very um, brilliant. Whatever you say, Swami. <laughs> Nobody is saying enthusiastically. Then he asked Kasturi, Kasturi, ni nen heltiya, matad bardo gita ma? Ni heladre madle beko Swami. If you tell, she has to do Swami. <laughs> why, why? No, so by that time my mother is like, really, why did I come to this meeting? I should have simply chosen myself. So no, Swami, she is too young, Swami. All very top people are coming. She cannot speak, Swami. That too she has. And in the meantime, I am saying, I cannot speak, Swami. First of all, Paramananda ke pra prasthana word itself, I am not understanding. The title, number one. What is this prasthana and all, I don't know. Then... And Paramananda, you know, we are not at all happy right now. How can I talk about Paramananda? 
ఐ కెన్ నాట్ టాక్ అండ్ ఆల్సో స్వామి బిగ్గెస్ట్ ప్రాబ్లమ్ ఐ కెన్ నాట్ టాక్ ఇన్ కన్నడ ఐ ఎమ్ అ కన్నడ స్పీకింగ్ బట్ ఐ కెన్ నాట్ స్పీక్ ద కైండ్ ఆఫ్ లిటరీ కన్నడ దట్ హ్యావ్ టు ఐ కెన్ నాట్ డూ దిస్ కన్నడ టాకింగ్ అండ్ ఆల్ దట్ స్వామి ఐ కెన్ నాట్ స్వామి ప్లీజ్ స్వామి ప్లీజ్ స్వామి సో మెనీ పీపుల్ ఆర్ దర్ స్వామి జస్ట్ ల్యాచ్ డౌన్ వై వై యూఆర్ టెలింగ్ లైక్ దట్ ఆల్ యువర్ లైఫ్ వేస్ట్ ఆఫ్ టైమ్ అయినా అది చిన్నప్పటి నుంచి చెప్పి చెప్పి సి ఐ హ్యావ్ వేస్టెడ్ మై టైమ్ ఆన్ యూ ఫ్రమ్ స్మాల్ చైల్డ్ ఐ హ్యావ్ బిన్ టెలింగ్ యూ ఎవ్రీథింగ్ యూఆర్ సిట్టింగ్ అండ్ లిసనింగ్ అండ్ లిసనింగ్ అండ్ నాట్ ప్రాక్టీసింగ్ ఎనీథింగ్ నౌ యూఆర్ టెలింగ్ యూ వాంట్ టాక్ ఆల్సో ఐ ఎమ్ నాట్ టెలింగ్ యూ టు ప్రాక్టీస్ ఐ ఎమ్ టెలింగ్ యూ అట్లీస్ట్ టాక్ దట్ ఆల్సో యూఆర్ నాట్ టెలింగ్ వై వై big argument no swami please swami i'm pleading by that time i'm kind poor uncle kasur is swami that girl is very nervous and enduk nervous sonne leda sequence why nervous am i not there you're losing your faith am i not there see every word of swami is veda am i not there so in the middle of this nonsense of the whole thing he said you go swami please swami i don't know what is that prasthana swami i can't speak in ante na you didn't understand the word prasthana ante journey paramananda ante bliss drinks tisconi in bliss kaadu <laughs> not the bliss that you get from alcohol he says the bliss that comes from within i don't know swami most beautiful talk of 10 minutes swami gave i must share with all of you because your retreat our retreat here says all we are all one treat everyone alike so swami said okay let us understand this what is this journey this journey ante emi you want to go from point a to point b Bangalore ninchi puttaparthi inko because that's all i knew in my we from bangalore to puttaparthi puttaparthi we never went anywhere for holiday bangalore to puttaparthi bangalore to puttaparthi a to b paval kada ha why you want to go to puttaparthi swam unnad akada swami is there when you see swami you feel tremendous joy so you want to go there so you plan a trip to puttaparthi from so what do you require for a trip first of all you require faith what is the faith there is a place called puttaparthi there is a person called shri satya sai baba whom we believe to be bhagwan or guru whatever so you must have the faith there is prashanti niriyam and there is swami you may not have seen it so how will you have faith because all the people whom you trust your great sages your aunts uncles they have all told you there is a beautiful place called prashanti niliyam in that abode lives the divine energy so you are placing your faith based on what somebody has told you how to f- see even then i would constantly bug so how can we believe what everybody says that is the seed of faith god has put in your heart how do you believe when your mother says i am your mother how do you believe no unta va did you know when you were born she was your mother doctor told you your daddy told you aunty told you ajji told grandmother told you you believe like that great sages have told there was a rama there was a krishna there was a jesus there was a great people told you have to believe so you have faith faith is there prashanti niliyam is there swami is there i want to go there to see him so journey you know then what do you require first and foremost for the journey you require to know the path road three roads are there to puttaparthi you can go via chikballapur you can go via dodballapur you can go via lepakshi swami is telling all this you get three path yav path mood road lu nai three roads are which are gnana marga bhakti marga karma marga three roads you can choose whichever road you want you can choose whatever comes to you naturally road emo undi place is there road is there then what you require you require vehicle to go vehicle is also there what is that vehicle body god has given you a body that is your vehicle you are born as a human being this body has been given to you to reach that paramananda that is the real reason why you got the body not for house with fountain so 
that is the real reason so body but body also it is fixed based on your prarabdha karma your past karma you may be short you may be tall you may be fair you may be dark white brown whatever it doesn't matter that body has been given to you by god based on your past karma it can be a slow one it can be a fast one it can vehicle car swami in those days no 70s లేట్ సిక్స్టీస్ ఎడ్డులు బండి కావచ్చును కారు కావచ్చును బస్సు కావచ్చును ప్లేన్ కావచ్చును ఈ సేమ్ ఇట్ కుడ్ బి ఎద్దుల బండి దట్ ఈస్ బులక్ కార్ట్ ఇట్ కెన్ బి అ కార్ ఇట్ కెన్ బి అ బస్ ఇట్ కెన్ బి అ ప్లేన్ సో యువర్ బాడీ కెన్ ట్రావెల్ ఎట్ డిఫరెంట్ స్పీడ్ based on your ప్రారబ్ధ కర్మ దట్ ఈస్ ద బాడీ యూ హ్యావ్ గాట్ సో వీఆర్ ఆల్ ఇన్ డిఫరెంట్ వెహికల్స్ డిఫరెంట్ స్టేషన్స్ ఆల్సో సో దెన్ ద బాడీ ఈస్ దేర్ ఇట్స్ ఆల్రెడీ దేర్ so no question then what do you need puttaparthi ba nothing is available in puttaparthi you need to take your luggage kada suitcase luggage trunk so i used to say trunk luggage in that luggage also you don't have much control already you have put some clothes there from past lives your vasanas are there your past life desires are there everything you have come so one suitcase is there vehicle is ready path is there now you want to start the journey guruvaram rahu kalam ayin tarvata swami so says on thursday after rahu kalam <laughs> this is all what my aunts is my elders used to do so i am familiar with that that's why he is using that example that's what we have to do with children we have to use examples they are familiar so వెళ్తావా సరీ బోర్ స్వామి సెస్ యు ఆర్ బోర్డ్ హూ విల్ ట్రావెల్ అలోన్ సో యూ వోంట్ ట్రావెల్ అలోన్ ఏం చేస్తావు యూ స్టార్ట్ గెటింగ్ కంపానియన్స్ ఫ్రెండ్స్ హస్బెండు వైఫు పిల్లలు ఫ్యామిలీ రిలేటివ్స్ ఫ్రెండ్స్ యూ స్టార్ట్ కలెక్టింగ్ కంపెనీ అరౌండ్ యూ ఫ్రెండ్స్ ఫ్యామిలీ విల్ యూ వాంట్ టు కమ్ డూ యూ వాంట్ టు కమ్ విత్ మీ టు పుట్టు పడితే సో ఇన్ లైఫ్ ఆల్సో యూనో వీ కలెక్ట్ ఆల్ దీస్ అటాచ్మెంట్స్ friends family f- husband children whatever may be you collect so they all say yes yes we want to come we have heard about satya sai baba we want so now single person was going to go at the time now 10 people you will say after rahu kalam they will say before rahu kalam you will say we will go in the afternoon they will say we will go in the evening so lot of discussion more people you add to your life more discussion more distraction more anyway you added all these people everybody got get together left uh, bangalore and then you start going you are left in the morning 7 am you are only going to reach puttaparthi by swamis you want to reach by evening darshan 5 pm so you are going suddenly one person will say as you come near just so beautifully swami knows the road so far. as you come near chikkabalapur even now it is a dangerous uh, turning <laughs> chikkabalapur chikkabalapur akkada oka board vastundi lepakshi and lepakshi board will come somebody say this lepakshi temple bradeshwara temple is there so beautiful shiva temple let us see that and go still 5 o'clock there is so much time it is only 9 o'clock we can go there then the ladies now will be there they will say yes yes lepakshi temple is there but also lepakshi cotton sarees are very famous let us go let us go so the ladies will say one thing somebody will say lepakshi so go straight car turn don't turn left ladies and gentlemen maybe right is better now nowadays but left turn you go you go to lepakshi you see everything enta baavundi enta padi you somebody built it 2000 year old temple is there if ever you people go to puttaparthi in these days you go to lepakshi it's a beautiful temple actually shiva temple sometimes we used to stop there with swami to have lunch because it was a old temple lot of in the old days anyway that lepakshi and then the ladies will they see the temple and they no ladies will look at sari then they want gajalu konali adu konali they are buying bangles this that then one person you know because ultimately the soul's yearning to go is there one person hey it's getting late i say you people how long you are taking let us go so we will miss swami's darshan everybody piles into the car by that time there will be one more person in the group you know he say yo you still 5 o'clock time is there on the way we get penukonda let us eat benne dosa you know in penukonda that butter dosa was very famous even for swami we used to get near the bus stay bus stand of penukonda <laughs> so that benne let us eat that dosa and go lot of time is there 
So you know the tongue, first uh, eyes are distracted, then ears are distracted, then tongue is distracted, all these five senses creating problem. Uh, then we'll go and eat bananas. You will be going. Okay, okay. Anyway, we, so this is a peer pressure. Everybody will say, anyway, we have to eat. If you are going to eat, might as well eat bananas. You have brought chitra annam pergana undi karlo. Inside the car, there is uh, lemon rice, yogurt, everything. But no, bananas is attracting. Let us go. We will keep the chitra annam pergana for the night. <laughs> because anyway, puttaparthi, nothing is available. See how we make it convenient for ourselves, what we want to do. So we are going, then suddenly one doubting Thomas will be there in this group, who is coming first time. He will say, hey, I think this road itself is wrong. Who told this is the road to Puttaparthi? No sign is there. Nothing is in those days. No signs were there. Nothing is there. I think somebody told me right after Chikabalapur, you have to go right side. That is where you have to go to Puttaparthi. By that time, one road will come. You take that road. Yes, yes, this man is very well known. He is very intellectual. He has lot of knowledge. He may be telling correctly. See, sometimes his intellect is a problem. So that intelligent man will guide us on some road. We will go there and we come to some village there. And Balu will know these places. <laughs> this thing. And we ask, hey, where is Prashanti Niliyam? We have travelled one hour. Where is Prashanti? Prashanti Niliyam. He says, there is no Prashanti Niliyam here. Oh, you, is this not the place? How to go there? No, no, you can't go from here. You have to go back. To that main road, this is Palasamudram, Swami says. This is Palasamudram. There is no road from Palasamudram to Prashanti Nili, Puttaparthi. Go back. Come back again to the main road of your life. You are travelling, travelling, travelling. See, this is the Punarapi Jananam, Punarapi Maranam, Swami said. You are going in this road, you are going in that door. You are going after your senses, you are going after Benne Dose. You are going after Sari, you are going after Bangal. So, going on, repeating the journeys, going on, but still, yearning is there. Somebody say, hey, let us go, what is this, getting late, getting late. Go, 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 let's go, let's go. In the way, now we have toll gate. Now we have, not, those days, no toll to go to Puttaparthi. But that railway gate fellow used to be there. After we crossed Penukonda, before going to Puttaparthi, one railway, small one uh, narrow gauge railway used to go. That fellow will close the gate. When we used to go, that fellow closed the gate and he won't open it till you give money. There is no train coming for three days. But he will close the gate. We have to give him money. Only then he will open the gate. Otherwise he will have disappeared. In some hut he is living, that gate fellow. That is the toll. So, Swami, you have to pay that fellow toll. Swami also used to pay that fellow. So, pay that fellow toll, then only he will open the gate. Who is that toll fellow? All the problems you have brought now in the suitcase. That toll gate fellow is keeping track. How many trips? So, he will open the gate. You have to pay the toll for using the journey in this body you have come. Finally, you have come with your suitcase and your hold all and... Prashanti Niliyamu. That time there was no arch and all that we have now. Only one blue board was there in Telugu. Prashanti Niliyamu, it said. Prashanti Niliyamu board. You come inside. There was no Ganesha also. Only banyan tree was there. We used to park the car there. In front of the banyan. You get down from the car. Start hearing the Vedam chanting or music. Actually, there was no music and all coming. Some Sai Gita's ears, something say, Hey, Swami, watch out, Swami, watch out, Swami has come, Swami has come. As soon as that message comes, Swami is coming, Swami is coming, there will be two people in the crowd throw their luggage and their hold all. For the youngsters who don't know what hold all, it's like a sleeping bag. We used to keep everything inside that tent travel, especially for Puttaparthi. You throw everything there and you run. You don't care about. This luggage was petko na kada kafi pudi, char pudi, pulus pudi. See, in those days, nothing was alive in Puttaparthi. So they used to carry rasam powder, sambar powder, coffee powder. All these South Indian ladies, even without food, they can live. Without coffee, they cannot live. Everything they used to take in the hold all. So Swami said, no, remember all that coffee pudi, char pudi, rasam pudi, anta. You throw that there and you're running to see Swami. Two 
people are saying let's go let's go so other says oh you what to do with the suitcase and hold all somebody will take it what should so you will say ayyo who cares about that swami is coming let us go they will say no 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 you go and have darshan we will look after hold all and suitcase they will stay back you run si swami dooram nunchi na juttu kanapadutundi so from a distance you see my hair everything is forgotten hold all is forgotten suitcase is forgotten relatives are forgotten family is forgotten you come you just close your eyes all the senses are withdrawn your eyes are closed your thoughts go inward and you close your eyes you are not looking at me and i come near you and i say hey eppudu vacha when did you come you open your you can't talk words are not coming contained some some sloka i'll remember swami chanted that sloka nothing comes out you just look at me and all you feel you have forgotten everything only you are there and i am there you and i are one adhe paramanandam that is the paramanand that is the journey that is the journey paramanand ke prasthan for that moment everything is forgotten your hold all your rasam powder coffee everything forgot only you are there and i am there you and i are kasturi garu ana swami how to feel that all the time that is the shrama shraddha tools that is the journey in which you learn for that we have to train our children for that you have to live your life for that he has given many tools another occasion another retreat we will talk about that but this is the journey of you and i are one that paramananda that paramananda if we have to enjoy that ananda which has no second then we have to use this body to travel this journey in a proper way with the right people with the right company with the right desires and with the right feelings if we do that then all are one you and i are one jai sai ram Sairam that was absolutely absolutely breathtaking it, it's beyond words at this point what beautiful messages right that our loving loving saima is always watching over us right and so we have to make sure that we conduct ourselves or we 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 do all the right things and the end result what she pointed out was beautiful to look at swami's beautiful smile that's our end point and that's how we do the right thing so we can actually see that beautiful sw- smile on swami's face um absolutely beautiful messages and um the parmananda ke prasthana <laughs> the journey that she described i mean i i don't think anybody else can can describe the way she did because uh she's been there right you can actually see the scene in act in front of you that's how beautifully she describes the whole um experience that she has had uh with swami so one can actually be a fly in on the wall right if you can imagine it that way it is absolutely breathtaking it's beyond and so t- have faith know the right path right take your body on this journey on this road take the right people with you have the right thoughts in mind and then um without distractions right pay the toll for the journey that the body has incurred and then to have the end result of seeing swami for swami and what a beautiful way to also bring the retreat theme together too um that yes swami and you swami and i we are all one with swami and so all are one be a light to everyone thank you so much so much sister geeta uh, for that beautiful talk uh, you can give her a standing ovation i think she 
more than deserves this. Thank you. I would like to invite Sister Deepa Karanam.